What is a floating navel? I'm going to cover that coming up next in Body Piercing Basics, episode number 143. For those who are new to the channel, welcome to the Body Piercing and Tattooing channel. I uh, hope you're enjoying the videos. hope you're finding them helpful and useful, but you might not know who I am. My name is Debo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo in Des Moines, Iowa. So what we're going to talk about today is a type of navel piercing. It's uh, kind of considered fairly new, but uh, as I go through this, you're going to realize that maybe it isn't as new as it as it is as it's cracked out to be. Um, this is a piercing that's done more into the navel. Um, usually, there's only one part that's visible. This is done with a curved barbell with a disc on one side. So the disc sits inside the piercing or inside the navel. And then the only thing that's really visible is that top um, that's on the very top. So basically, uh, it looks like it's floating there without any additional support. Unlike a traditional navel, where you have the two balls on both sides that are very visible. So let's step back in time, back to 1994-ish, when I first started piercing and talk about how things were done back then and how this is very similar to that idea. When I first started piercing, navels were done initially with rings. Now, they were done more into the navel and less on the edge of the navel like they are done now or what people consider traditional piercings. The idea was it, it, you take your index finger, if you're not pierced, of course, stick it inside your navel and pinch down. You feel that loose tissue? It's almost like a lobe kind of like an ear or a nostril or uh, upper ear cartilage or a helix. It kind of protrudes from the body. There's that soft tissue in there that there's not a lot of fatty tissue and is loose and kind of flexible. That's what we pierce through. We still do that with navels in the way that we do them now, but not at the level we did back then. We basically did them almost at a 90-degree angle. So that bottom hole would be deep inside the navel and then come out the top. The reason being is that, well, it just seemed like that's the way it should go, but also because we were piercing with rings. This would allow that ring to be more inside the navel and have less contact with clothing and et cetera. Um, it made a faster healing period for that particular style of piercing um, with that type of jewelry. Now, is that something I'm going to advise doing? No, because what we learned about piercings over that past 30 years or so is that constant movement and agitation leads to issues. Back then, we considered, hey, you, you know, we uh, common advice was to rotate the jewelry. Common advice was to do it for rings so it allows that extra room for swelling. We know better now. Uh, curved barbells are a much better option because they limit that. Now, the angle the piercing is done at, that has a lot to do with your anatomy more than anything else. Even back then, uh, I would often have a discussion with, uh, I, I remember having a long thread on uh, Rec Art Body Art News Group. Uh, anybody remember those? I do. About how not everybody's navel was perfectly shaped for a curved barbell. How a navel that was more outside the body, a little a flatter stomach with a and not that curvature that some women have and some men do too, I guess, where uh, it was difficult to put a curved barbell in there because you're, it just didn't work. Um, in essence, it caused the situation where to even make the jewelry visible in some cases, the piercing was completely outside the navel and basically a surface-to-surface -surface piercing directly above the navel. Um, with some people, they have a deeper navel. It's a better option for them, and I'll probably do a video. Actually, I already have a video planned out that we'll talk about the, the uh, verses, pros and cons, and et cetera, between the two. But uh, with... Uh, Certain people, a ring or a piercing at that angle more inside the navel is a better option to fit into their body than doing it at the edge. When we do it, the more traditional. In most cases, it's more done that, you know, you have that loose flap of tissue I was talking about earlier. It's done almost like this opposed to this. So it, the bottom hole is more outside the navel, and the top hole is usually further up the stomach than we would normally do if we were doing a floating navel. What is the reason for all this? It's the diversity of anatomy. Oh, there are tons of different shapes of stomachs, different sizes, different navels. Navels come in a large variety from really deep to really shallow to any to outie, etc. 
everybody's different and not everything is going to work with your anatomy. And sometimes a better option is to have that piercing deeper inside your navel where it's better anchored and more out of the way than have uh, it on the edge where every time you bend, every time you move, it puts pressure outward on it or it's completely outside your navel. What anatomy would I suggest that uh, you do definitely go for floating navel? That would be anybody that has a deeper navel where it's more inside the body. Um, anybody that their stomach kind of curves inward, they're very hourglass shaped. Um, those that have kind of a crease when they bend, when they sit down, it kind of makes a line right there at the navel. All of those people are going to be a better candidate for a floating navel than a traditional navel. The other thing would be bigger people. They're going to generally do better with a floating navel than, say, somebody who's super, super small and tiny. Uh, mainly because their navel tends to be deeper than those skinny, tiny people. And thus, it's, it creates that situation where if it's going to be pierced to be visible, it's done almost completely outside the navel, and that's wrong. Now, what type of jewelry can you wear in a floating navel? General, the most common is the curved barbell with the disc on one side, usually affixed, or they can be uh, screwed on, or uh, you could use a threadless one. The top is basically any variety that's going to be top-facing. Um, this can allow you to put on a lot of very interesting uh, designs. A lot of uh, threadless jewelry will work with this. A lot of the large uh, gym clusters and shapes and et cetera, and even their threaded co uh, version. The other option would be a J-bar. A J-bar is shaped like a J. And what it'll do is, because uh, it's more inside your navel, that J section will cause it to kind of stick out and kind of sit outside the navel. This is especially helpful if you want kind of that two ball look or two gym look that is more traditional with navel jewelry. Now, if you have uh, that fold there or you're deeply involved in that hourglass, it's probably going to be a little more uncomfortable when sitting or making certain movements. Now, what about somebody who's had a normal navel piercing done with the two traditional balls, the larger one on the bottom, the smaller one on the top? Can you switch to a floating navel? Yes, but it's not going to have the same effect because it's probably going to, that bottom is probably going to be visible to a degree. Um, when these are done correctly, you do not see the bottom of it at all. You just see that top piece. It almost looks like there's a dermal implant or single point piercing there. Well, that's all I have to say on this subject today. Hopefully you learned something. If anybody out there has had a floating navel and had a good or bad experiences with it, please leave a comment. Let us know. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Thank you for watching and check out this other video.